guys, this is Sibylla Mirage. Welcome back to my channel. I am back and I'll be talking about why I was absent at the very end of this video. So if you're interested, please stick around. Today's video is going to be extremely fulfilling for all of us. It is extremely exciting to watch unboxing videos of little gifts and trinkets. And I'm sure we can all feel the rush and excitement for the person opening a new shiny little thing, but I also believe that we can all relate to, I don't know, um, the weight being lifted off one's shoulders by decluttering. Please let me know in the comments if you feel the same way, because this is a completely new type of a video I'm making here, and I don't know if it will be interesting for a lot of you, since I've been just constantly shopping and looking for a new necklace or a new pendant and you know my obsession with necklaces yet today I'm not wearing one. So I have sold quite a few, like almost 10 I believe, all my designer jewelry pieces and most of them are fine jewelry so I will be talking about those first. Recently I have been um, trying to declutter my mind, my closet, I've donated a lot of things, I have a ton of shoes to donate still that I'm going through. I felt guilty and it's not like, you know, um, it's a pair of sneakers or boots that takes up space or a bag. It's like a little ring or a necklace and it doesn't take much space, but it deserves to be worn and loved. And if I haven't worn it in a while, I decided to let it go. Um, especially the pieces that I've upgraded or I'm no longer interested in. I decluttered, as you already know from the title, my jewelry. Let's go. So in this video, I'm only going to talk about the jewelry pieces that I have sold, not returned or exchanged. Um, I have a couple of exchanges, but I don't like doing that. I don't like exchanging or returning for a store credit, especially if you buy something from the store. I mean like Van Cleef or Cartier. I think Cartier does refunds, but I'm not sure. Um, so I think I spoke about a few of those or a couple of those on this channel, so I'm not going to talk about that. I'm strictly talking about the pieces of jewelry that I've had for a while, for years, and then decided to let go and the reasons behind it. So we're going to start with Cartier. I have let go of four rings. The first Cartier ring I sold, it was a while back, maybe a half a year ago or maybe even eight months ago. It was a thin love ring. I think it's called a wedding Cartier wedding band and it was in white gold, no diamonds. And the reason I let that ring go, it was an amazing ring. It was very comfortable. It was thin and it was perfect for my thumb and I like thumb rings very much. But unfortunately, I couldn't get past that gunmetal -y hue, like shade of white gold. It was just not for me. It did not stand out on my skin tone. Like this ring, this is the Justin Glue, and every Justin Glue ring without diamonds comes rhodium plated, which I didn't know until I got this ring. And, um, and I can see a huge difference and I really like it. I didn't miss the ring. I didn't feel bad about letting it go. It was just sitting there and it kind of looked, you know, like an old, um, keychain ring. It didn't look like anything special to me and it didn't stack well with my love rings and I had two regular thick, um, well, regular love rings, which we're gonna talk about next. So I let go of not one, but two of my love rings. Two of my regular size love rings in rose gold and yellow gold. And I got two of them in different colors, but the same size because they really liked stacking them. But there is an issue. And if you're new to Cartier and if you want to get a love ring, um, you know, it's it depends. If you're like into if you're into rings, it might be comfortable from the get-go for you, but for me it was not. It was actually, it was kind of a nightmare because the Thin Love wedding band was perfectly comfortable. It's not worth the price because I feel like it's not enough gold, it's very tiny, you can't see the nail head like logo, so it's just kind of like a plain band from afar. You can't really tell what it is, so 
I don't feel like it's worth the price. It is very affordable compared to other prices of other rings, but I think that a regular love ring is way better value for money. And especially if you get it for ring or, um, I'm sorry, for index or middle finger, it's like a bigger size, it's more gold. So that's kind of how, <laughs> how I justify the prices, but it's very flat and flush to the skin. So it will make your finger sweat slightly, especially the water will get trapped under it because it's very flat and flush to your skin. And it's just, it, your finger gets slightly swollen, especially in summer. Forget about layering those, like wearing, stacking the, <laughs> layering, stacking the two love rings. It, it was just really like suffocating for my finger. It was not a good idea and I felt like I don't know, it looked really good. It did look really good because they were different shades and you could see that there were two different rings and they looked really good next to each other, but they were just not comfortable. So I let go of the yellow gold love ring first. I sold that one and I kept the rose gold because I really, really like rose gold on my skin tone. It's like, it complements my skin tone way better than yellow gold. So I decided to give that one a chance and I kept it for maybe six more months and then I let it go because I have upgraded to a thick pave uh, love ring. So it is in rose gold and it's full pave. I think I have a short on my channel with me looking at it at the store when I was choosing. I think I was paying for it already. I didn't do a full unboxing video because I wore it right away. I was very excited about it and it is very pricey, so I felt like I need to wear it as much as I can. So, and I got it right before the price went up, so I felt really lucky. But, you know, um, I didn't know the prices were gonna go up and I was very excited that I got that ring because it's like over $10,000 now and I paid, I think, $9,750 or almost 10,000 it was it was right under 10,000 now it's over but i feel like it is really worth it because it is such a bling and every time you wash your every time i wash my hands i can see how shiny it is and i haven't done like a deep cleaning or anything like that and i wear it every single day and it's very shiny it doesn't get dirty and if it does like from like lotion you just wash your hands and it looks brand new so when I got that ring, I decided to let go of my love ring in rose gold. I think there is a thinner version, uh, not the wedding band, but like a thin love ring with uh, for seven something or eight thousand, but it's just not worth the price. I feel like if you are going for like a blingy pave love ring, you should go for the thicker version because that one has way more diamonds and it shines and they're way bigger, so you can really tell them apart. And a little tip, why? <laughs> I'm getting into that, like, I'm getting um, into details, but a little tip, if you are going for a pave ring, uh, I would suggest not getting it for a ring finger, but for index or middle finger, I got it for my middle finger. So the carat weight is the same for um, all of the sizes, Unless you go really big, then you have to pay extra and it's like custom made, I feel like. So the bigger you go, the more spaced out, the bigger the size, the more spaced out the diamonds will be. And the more shiny, the more they stand out. Because I tried size 50 or 51 for my ring finger and the diamonds were so smushed together to fit all of them in. And when I saw size 55, I realized the difference. I saw the difference and I right away went for the bigger size and got it for my middle finger. Anyway, two love rings, thin wedding band in white gold. Now, the last ring from Cartier <laughs> um, is my thin Justin Clou in size 49 for my ring finger because again, I've upgraded, I don't know if I unboxed this on this channel, but it's just on Clue and it's for my index and middle finger in size 55 and it is with diamonds in rose gold as well. So I had to let that one go because it was just not um, serving me any longer. I didn't use it at all anymore and uh, yeah, I had to sell that one. There's nothing really wrong with it. I love it very much. It's very comfortable, but thick just on Clue, it's 
where it's at for me. I just feel like the bulkier the better, but only for rings, it's weird, but moving on. Now we're gonna cover Van Cleef and Arpel. Are you ready, guys? I have three items, three. Let's go. <laughs> the first one is my rose gold vintage Alhambra pendant with gray mother of pearl. I think I spoke about it in one of my videos, but briefly. So I have not worn that necklace a lot. I probably wore it about two times and I saw wear on the mother of pearl. Every mother of pearl is different. Every single mother of pearl has different like density and it's it varies. Some are fragile and some are more durable. It's just the nature of the stone. Uh, they're not all the same. So some will chip and um, um, lose the polish quicker than others. Some you can shower with and some you can't even sweat in or like, you know, go out in high humidity. So I feel like maybe I had lotion or some makeup. I don't know, but I didn't sweat. It was winter. Well, it's a lie, so maybe, but I don't think so. And the part that was touching my skin lost its luster. So you know how you like um, tilt, um, not only mother of pearl, but onyx, other stones, and you can see the reflection, like literally mirror-like reflection. It lost it in different spots. So I wiped it with um, microfiber cloth. Then I used a slightly damp microfiber cloth and it didn't work. And when I looked at it under a magnifying glass, I realized that it's actual damage that like the top layer was deteriorating. So I sold it and um, I lost some money on it. Of course, well, I lost money on everything, but it's better to, you know, let it go than you know, it made me feel bad. It made me feel like sour. I just didn't like the fact that here it is over $3,000 sitting there and it doesn't look good after a few wears. So that was the last drop of patience. When it, of my patience, when it comes to mother of pearl. No more mother of pearl, no white, no gray. I'm done. I'm just not lucky when it comes to mother of pearl. No more. Thank you. Item number two. Guys, you're gonna freak out because I only had it for, I don't know, a little while, maybe a year, but it is my Guilloche ring. And I have just sold it, so I did not wear it. It, to me, their vintage Alhambra rings don't feel like robust and substantial because they have so much space inside and it's very smart, it's well thought, um, through because it doesn't get your finger doesn't get trapped doesn't get suffocated it's it has room to expand so all of that is very well thought out but it was just like light and I didn't like again I was not a fan of guilloche from the beginning but I like it on my bracelet I like it on my white gold necklace I really love that one but for the ring, I just, I don't know. Um, it was too mustardy, it became too yellow, you know, the more... It's not that it was dirty, obviously, but it got some scratches. And the more, like, wear and tear I saw on it, I realized that it looks more yellow and more dull, and it doesn't look good against my skin. So for my bracelet, because it has two diamond motifs, like, it's okay, and I can make my piece with the rest, but <laughs> for the ring, it was not a good look. It looked like it, like mustard anyway <sighs> yes sorry sorry if i disappoint you because i unboxed that ring on this channel so the last piece of jewelry from van cleef that i've sold was the rose gold sweet alhambra necklace um hammered rose gold and i don't wear my necklaces after i buy them straight away because i have a lot of them so after the 30 day return period and i got it from online so i could have easily returned it I realized that the clasp didn't work smoothly. It was like hard, it was rough, and it was it was just not like up to Van Cleef standard. And I didn't like working with it. I didn't feel safe wearing the necklace. I felt like something was gonna snap or break because the spring was like too tight. Um, and I felt like the whole thing was gonna fall apart if I strain it too much or like um, open it too wide. So I sold it. Uh, now I'm being more careful, of course, but um, yes, I'm paying attention. I'm paying close attention. So 
That's the third and final item from Van Cleef that I've let go so far. I also sold one piece of jewelry from Tiffany and it was a Tiffany heart necklace. I love it so much. Ah, uh, it was so, so cute. I also engraved a pineapple on the back. It was just gorgeous, but the chain did not look shiny at all. Tiffany chains are not good. Like guys, I can't stress it enough. Like compared to Van Cleef or Cartier chains, uh, Tiffany chains are not shiny, not shiny at all, not even close, not even, you can't even see it on your skin. And by the way, I don't extend any of my necklaces. I've shortened a few, but I've never extended any because I feel like the shorter, the better, and my neck is really thin, so I like the choker style more. So usually I find that my necklaces are too long and I always wear it on a shorter setting, most of the time. Um, anyway, so the Tiffany heart necklace had to go because I simply didn't use it and I tried it on different other chains but it didn't look good. I just, I don't know, I feel like it has to come as a um, cohesive, you know, like a package, like a, um, like a pair, you know, from the same designer and I didn't want to keep the heart and sell the chain. I just sold the whole thing and I didn't even feel bad about it. I also wanted to talk about the Click Clack and Click Age bracelets from uh, Hermes. I think that Click Clack is the bigger one and Click Age is the thinner one. So I'm not sure, but I had two thin ones in white and black color with yellow gold hardware. I sold them because they were just sitting on the shelf they were not being used. I used them, I wore them for a picture here and there, but it was not enough to keep them. I felt guilty and they had to, they had to go. And also the thicker one, I had the limited edition with zebras in rose gold, white background and like navy zebras. It was really gorgeous. I love it so, so much. But again, I didn't wear it enough because if I have real precious metal jewelry, then that's what I'm gonna wear. Like those bracelets are gonna get the first pick and then you know yeah but i kept my lizard leather or lizard skin um uh collier de chain like the thinner version it's so stunning so i kept that one i'm wrapping it up real quick i am gonna do a quick unboxing after this so that video is coming up next it's a little dior unboxing if you want to see it but you're gonna see it anyway because i'm posting it after this one and I'm very happy to be back. The reason I wasn't back, oh my gosh, my parents came to visit from New York and it was a, it was a disaster. They stayed for a couple of weeks. We just fought the entire time. Um, do I say this? How do I say this? My mom is a kind of covert narcissist. So she just, every plan we, my partner and I had, um, she tried to ruin. It was just like low key, like passive aggressive. It was just, it was a lot. And after they left, I honestly couldn't get myself back on track. I was so emotionally drained. If you want, I can make a video about it at some point because you know how like uh, you feel like emotionally drained. I don't know if you ever had an experience with like a vulnerable, secretive, whatever it's called, narcissist. Um, I really don't know the language in English, but I'm, I think I'm doing a pretty good job explaining it. So yeah, it was just... Uh, a lot of money was wasted, a lot of plans were ruined uh, and it was my partner's vacation and we wanted to spend it with the family and we wanted to like, you know, enjoy ourselves and everything that we planned was um, pretty much 90% of everything we planned was ruined in one way or another. I felt weak and I felt emotionally drained and I just needed to, I wasn't even on Instagram, I privated my IG. Um, guys, if you want to ask me questions, I replied to several of you and you reach out to me on my Instagram, but it's better if you ask questions here. Leave comments with all of your questions here because on Instagram, I don't check my DMs most of the time, but here I regularly check my comments. So. Um, yeah, it's just the easier way for me to communicate with you, but yeah, it was just a lot. I had to take some time for myself and I had to recharge and I had to just breathe because it was a lot and I was kind of depressed almost. Well, not almost, I was. So now I'm back and I just wanted to share this decluttering, declutter, decluttering, jewelry declutter video. And I'm very happy I did. I hope you like it. Leave your comments down below. Let me know if you relate. Let me know what you let go if you sold any of your designer uh, fine jewelry because it's very interesting and I'm sure others will learn from your experiences in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you soon. Bye, guys.